Hello, ladies and gentlemen. Today we're going to talk about the middleweight BMW GS. That's right, we know it. It's the F800 Ugh, GS. Now, we all know the 1200, but the F800, I mean, it's been around, ow, for a very, very long time. I mean, Stackfontein Caves are not far from here, and in there, there is a painting of somebody doing the Meerkat on an 800 GS. That's how long it's, ow, been around. So, you kind of think BMW should possibly update it. And so, after that unnecessarily arduous walk, we present the new 850 GS. <laughs> But this is more than just an extra 50cc. In fact, it's 55cc. That's boosted the power from 85 to 96 horsepower. But it's more than just explosions in the engine. It also has a different order of explosions. Now the previous GS had a 800 GS had a regular fire order. So it was also a parallel twin like this one, but it fired boom, 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 regular. This one is irregular, it goes boom, 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 boom. So it's like a heartbeat and um, more than just in like a physical sense, metaphorically, it does feel heartbeatish. It feels alive, it gives it a soul. It also gives it a much better sort of droney kind of sound, a bit more like grown up where the last one was a little bit whiny, yeah. With extra heartbeat comes extra torque, increased from 80 Nm to 92. But it's not all good news. The previous 800 was famous for its light weight, tipping the scales at an impressive 207 kg, with all its bodily fluids topped up. The 850 though, well, it weighs in at a somewhat rotund 229 kg. That's 22 kg heavier than the 800. Now before enraged enthusiasts take to social media and explain how their old gears from the 80s were so light you could carry them on their shoulders, keep in mind that this is not exactly BMW's fault because those gears were Euro nothing. This is Euro 5. And let's take a look at what that means. First of all, there's emissions, and that's a big thing here. It's not just the catalytic converter, which is getting bigger and bigger. Look at the size of that thing. But it's everything inside the motor. I mean, they've got to make sure that this thing burns all the fuel, turns it all at least into carbon dioxide, so that could go through the catalytic converter and then be changed into H2O. So that by the time the exhaust gases get here, they're as fresh as a Swiss Alp morning. But don't forget, it's not just about emission. There's noise also. I mean, in Switzerland, there are certain parts of Switzerland, they want to ban the combustion engine completely, go all electric. So this thing over here, the exhaust, needs to make almost no noise. The decibel levels are ridiculous. So this silencer needs to be much bigger, much beefier, needs to drown out just about everything. But it's not just the silencer. Remember that a lot of the engine makes noise. For example, the airbox makes almost as much noise as the exhaust. So that also, the whole airbox needs to be beefed up and made as soundproof as possible. More than just that, I mean, the motor itself, sound comes out of there. So even there, they've got to think about where all the sound is coming up. So, and it's not, just noise. I mean, there's safety. These all need top of the range ABS. That is now compulsory. But the thing is, all of this adds weight. So everything you do adds weight. But it's not just the weight of these pieces. It's the sort of snowball effect. Because every time you add weight to a motorcycle, to a component of a motorcycle, that weight needs to be supported. And the way to support that weight is to add more weight. So you're just constantly having to add weight the whole time. In fact, an engineer once told me that on a big adventure bike, Euro 5 adds as much as 40 kilograms to a motorcycle. So if there were no Euro 5, that bike will be 40 kilograms less. Given that, 22 kilograms, it doesn't sound so bad. And how do all these extra measures affect the feel of the motorcycle? Well, when you're pushing the bike from a standstill, you can feel it's definitely got some extra kilos. But when you're here on the bike, they kind of disappear. The engineers are quite magicians when it comes to that. So how do all these extra changes affect the motorcycle on the road? BMW have gifted the 850 with just about every bit of electronic you can think of. I mean, I don't even know why we list them anymore because it's got everything. Nice new TFT dash, 
all the bells and whistles, all the modes, everything. The only thing, it, electronic suspension included. The only thing it has that I'm going to complain about, and I complained about this with a 700 also, it's got a quick shift to up and down, which sounds very cool, except when you actually try and use it. Look, watch this. Jeez, like. I mean, it's not really changing gear. That's like moving a sluice gate. It's just, it's just awful. But while we babble on about on-road prowess, the 850 was set up more for the dirty stuff. Right, we're going to slip the mode with this button here. We're going to slip the mode into Enduro Pro, which is an optional extra. That means full power, very little electronic interference. In fact, the ABS on the rear is turned off completely. And let's go off-road. <laughs> oh, this is fun. <laughs> It, it's it's very balanced this motorcycle it's um it's like you get bikes that are very light but they kind of feel very light to turn but very twitchy and then you got bikes that are very stable and when you try and turn them you well you end up a bit like an ocean liner this is sort of just in between it's not the best handy bike i've ever had but then it is solid and i feel very good about this <laughs> Those wheels are spoked, while the front wheel is the 21 inch traditionally found on off-road machines. The suspension travel may not be class leading, but it certainly seems to do the job. Uh, the motor especially, well the motor's reactive, it's very predictable, especially on these uh, non knobbly tires. <laughs> yeah, you can do that, you can do that. It doesn't feel like it wants to kill me either, but I... The quick shifter doesn't want to work so well though. Ah, there we go, it's changed. I love everything except the quick shifter. <laughs> That's fun. That's a lot of fun. <laughs> I love riding motorcycles. I like this one. Better than the 800. It's a million times better. It's a different world to the 800. <laughs> I happen to know, and Don probably wouldn't like me to tell you this, but uh, you know, maintaining his uh, journalistic integrity and all that, but I happen to know, Don, you don't yes. really, you've never really been a fan of the 800GS, have you? No, I hated it. Okay. <laughs> I'm not going to hide it, I just couldn't stand the bloody 800GS. Okay, I've seen the film now, you seem a little bit happier with the product that's on offer. It's, last week we spoke about the NT07, and we said even though it's not the most horsepower ever, it's got this sort of character, and this sort of fun, and this, it sort of brings joy to your life. 800 years did not. It yes. Was, it, was just, oh, it was just dull. It was just bland. functional and yeah. bland. And you know, well, the big thing about this bike, it's got that new kind of irregular firing order mode. It's amazing what that does. I mean, I'd send the piece beating hard. It is a beating hard. It, 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 it just gives it this whole character that kind of transforms everything. And it sounds like something small and stupid, but it, it, it really so, does make the yeah. bike. Absolutely. Better. I mean, a bike has to have character. Sometimes it's very difficult to define what gives it that character, but there's a perfect example. Yes. So obviously more disposed to liking the GS, but let's face it, this bike is coming yeah. into a class with some ridiculous competition. I mean, okay, there's the, it's a sort of mid-range kind of mm. uh, adventure, yeah, adventure bike thing. Yeah. yeah, I mean, you've got the 800 Tiger, a bike Great. that is now, it's even more dinosaur than the 800 GS yeah, it's, now. it's ancient, so but that will is, get an update. That, that's gonna get an update yeah. very soon. Um, and then of course, KTM 790 Adventure R and that the daddy. Was... Let's be honest, the daddy. Yeah. And and the weird thing is though, not only is it the daddy in terms of kit and performance and off-road ability, which is primarily where these things are aimed, it wins on price. Yeah, here's the thing: the Tiger 800 and this 850GS, or both in full spec, are 199,000 rand, so near as damn it 200,000 rand. The the 790 Adventure R, the off-road one, the hardcore one, one yeah. 185. I mean, it's wow. 15 grand less. That's and it's a thousand dollars, a thousand pounds a year. That's, that's, that's not a small price difference. I think that Tiger 800 is, out of the three is the more road oriented. Yes. Even yes. the one with the off-road stuff, but that motor lends itself more to road riding. The 790, very much off-road. The 850, Straddles smack the bang two. in the middle. Yeah. Oh, there you go. Nice way to sum it up. Okay, we'll be back after the break with uh, well, some more BMWs. <laughs>